start off by saying Barak Dehawa, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Racha Kodash. Welcome to another live lesson. The name All of right. this one is Is This the Man That Made the Earth to Tremble? And pretty much this um, comes from something I was just watching <clears throat> a little while ago on RT Live. And uh, pretty much we're always taught. You know, or people that do know about it, uh, about the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But there were more bombings and raids that took place in Tokyo <clears throat> that same year. And, um, you know, these devils, they, they, don't, they don't give a shit about nobody. You know, they'll kill themselves, they'll kill everybody because that's just the spirit that the Lord got upon them. Matter of fact, you know, the the Most High said that through the mouth of King David. Let's go to uh, Psalms 17 and 13. It says, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So Esau is the sword of the Lord. And there's no coincidence why the blessing that Esau has is the sword when you go back read uh genesis the 27th chapter so esau's power is that sword which comes in the form of guns missiles so on and so forth but he is the hand of the lord and the lord is using him to fulfill prophecies you know and there's a lot of stuff that these devils have done that they pretty much swept up under the rug so to speak you know, and no one knows about, but there are certain things that are not really spoken of much, but they're coming to light now. And there are many things that he did to the nation of Israel, all 12 tribes that are not even uh, known about because over time history, then for, you know, he forgot about, about it because no one took the time to document certain things down and there's some stuff that just hasn't been documented it's not known but the lord knows all of these things and there's a record kept of everything that this devil has done so these devils being the sword of the lord and that was um what the lord gave them as a blessing it says from men which are thy hand o lord from men of the world which have their portion in this life and whose belly thou fittest with thy head treasure, they are full of children and leave the rest of the substance to their babes. You know, so pretty much these devils are the sword of the Lord. And like I said, you know, I was watching RT Live and I just found out that I guess it was today. Today is March 10th. No, March 9th, 2020 year of prophecy. And um, it's, it's marking the 75th anniversary of these different bombings that took place in um in um in Japan all right and we're always you know we do speak on prophecy as far as that's concerned we speak about Hiroshima and Nagasaki which were the two main cities that were bombed but there was a lot more than that going on this is uh on history channel it says fire bombing of Tokyo now, Tokyo is the capital of Japan, if I'm not mistaken. This is 1945, March 9th. On this day, 75 years ago, these devils also dropped bombs on Tokyo and different cities in Japan. It wasn't just, um, it wasn't just um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It says, on the night of March 9th, 1945, U.S. warplanes launched a new bombing offensive against Japan dropping 2,000 tons of incendiary bombs on Tokyo over the course of the next 48 hours. Almost 16 square miles in and around the Japanese capital were incinerated, and between 80,000 and 130,000 Japanese civilians were killed in the worst single firestorm in recorded history. Now, I can't remember the name of the individuals, but they were Edomites that were making quotes you know about this pretty much they was pretty much careless about it they didn't have they had a nonchalant care careless attitude towards this you know because Esau does not have any feelings as far as taking life is concerned 
Um, let's go real quick. Uh, let's see. You got to remember, this man is the devil. He was created to be the devil. He don't have... He doesn't have uh, any remorse when it comes to killing. Let's go to Proverbs 12 and 10. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. So the most intimate, tender uh, moment that Esau could have is pretty much cruel. Because that's, that's they, they're cruel. That's, that's what they were created for. Remember, the Lord said there was two... Nations in Rebecca's womb And they're pretty much two totally different people Now Jake, the Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians We're very compassionate Very caring You know, and even Wicked Jakes out there have a certain amount of compassion Within themselves But Esau is the total opposite His mercy is cruelty You know That's what his mercy, mercy to him is, cruelty that's why when you look at them, they have that blank stare in their eyes. They, it's like they're soulless. You know, they don't have that compassion. They don't have that seed of compassion that was given to the Israelites. Because remember, there were two totally different children in Rebecca's womb. So there were uh, uh, quotes from, I'm not sure if they were generals or military men or senators or whatever it was. Pretty much they... Like they did, they had like a non care, nonchalant attitude towards these bombers, and they they were like like pretty much like good, fuck them, you know. Early on March 9th, Air Force crews met on the Mariana Islands of the uh, Tinian and Sapien Sapon Sapon for a military briefing. They were planning a low level attack, low level bombing attack on Tokyo. That would begin at evening, but with a twist. Their planes would be striped, uh, uh, stripped of all guns except for the tail turret. The, de decreased, uh, the decrease in weight would increase the speed of each super fortress bomber and would also increase its bomb load capacity by 65%, making each plane able to carry more than 7 tons. Speed would be crucial, and the crews were warned that if they were shot down, all haste was to be made for the water, which would increase their chances of being picked up by the American rescue crews. Should they land within Japanese territory, they could only expect the very worst treatment by civilians, as the mission that night was going to entail the deaths of ten, tens of thousands of those very same civilians. You're going to deliver the biggest firecracker the Japanese has ever seen said U.S. military Curtis LeMay. This was one of them. So it was a uh, U.S. general, Curtis Le LeMay. He, this is what he said. This, they, they're going to receive the biggest firecracker they ever seen. You know, this is the careless attitude of Esau. It says, the cluster bombing of the downtown Tokyo suburb of Shitamaki had been approved only a few hours earlier. Shitamaki was composed by roughly 750,000 people living in cramped quarters in wooden frame buildings. And that's another thing. A lot of the structures of Japan at that time were made out of wood. And they were dropping incendiary devices to burn the people up and to burn their homes and businesses and all of that. Setting ablaze this paper city was a kind of experiment in the effects of firebombing. Remember, it says that that this is in the power of Esau's hand to do, and they do it. Micah 2. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. And this word for power here is Allah, which is uh, God. It's like a God-like power that they have in their hand. And they use this power wrongly, cruelly. It says, it would, uh, it would also destroy the light industries called shadow factories that produce prefabricated prefab uh, war materials de destined for Japanese aircraft factories. Um, and you brothers can read the rest of this. You know, I put this in the description box. It's not really much left. You know, I just want to kind of move along because I got to get ready to leave. Uh, this is CNN. History's deadliest air raid happened in Tokyo. During World War II, and you've probably never heard of it, and I've never heard of it. Heard of it, you know. This came out yesterday. I've never heard of it. 
You know, all I always heard was Hiroshima and Nagasaki. You have Tokyo and you have others. It says, uh, everywhere she turned, eight-year-old Haruyo Nilhei saw flames. Bombs dropped by the Americans had created tornadoes of fire so intense that they were sucking mattresses from homes and hurling them down the street along with furniture and people. The flames consumed them, turning them into balls of fire, says Nehei, now 83. Nehei had been asleep when the bombs began raining down on Tokyo, then a city comprised of mostly wooden houses, prompting her to flee the home she was uh, with, uh, with her parents, her older brother and her younger sister, and she raced down her street. The superheated winds set her fireproof wrap ablaze. She briefly let go of the father's hand to toss it off. At, the, at that moment, he was swept away in the crush of people trying to escape. As the flames closed in, can you imagine the horror this little eight-year-old girl was going through, witnessing all of this shit? As the flames closed in, these devils don't give a fuck about nobody. And that's why they're going to get fucked up in the kingdom of heaven. As the flames closed in, the hay found herself at, Tok at a Tokyo crossroad, screaming for her father. A stranger wrapped himself around her to protect her from the flames. As more people piled into the intersection, she was pushed to the ground. As she drifted uh, in and out of consciousness beneath the crush, she remembers hearing muffled voices above. We are Japanese. We, we must live. We must live. Eventually, the voices became weaker until silence. When the hay was finally pulled out from the pile of people, she saw their bodies charred black. The stranger who had protected her was her father. After falling to the ground, they'd both been shielded from the fire by the charred co uh, corpses that were now at their ankles. It was the early morning of March 10, 1945, and the hay had uh, just survived the deadliest bombing raid in human history. And there goes a picture. And these devils took pictures and everything. Now, you know, there's a lot more to read, so I'm just going to jump down to this part so I can hit a couple of precepts. Like I said, I got to gotta roll out, got to go to the plantation today. 99% of a city destroyed in one night. But before we read that, it says, Killing Japanese didn't bother me much. And this is the attitude of Esau. The destruction wrought upon Tokyo on March 10th only emboldened the Americans. Further, the raids on the Japanese capital on April 14th and 18th and May 24th and 26th reduced a further 3.87 square miles to cinders, an area one and a half times the size of Manhattan. They got the actual picture there and the picture of the planes that did this. In a few months, we expect to run out of targets in Japan, see? So they were going there to just de uh, eviscerate uh, Japan, pretty much. Uh, it says tens of thousands more people were killed and firebombs followed on major cities of Nagoya, Osaka, and Kobe. The U.S. bombers then targeted medium-sized towns, hitting 58 of them according to the official history. So, man, I mean, there's a lot more. I'm going to read this. 99% uh, of the city uh, destroyed in one night, while the March 9th through 10th, 1945 bombing of Tokyo was the deadliest raid of the war. For sheer totality of destruction, it was eclipsed by the August 1st, 1945 firebombing raid on Toyama. So you, they, don't, they never speak about this. They always speak about Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Esau has a very uh, shameful history. That's why the Lord said he was uh, Spew shameful spewing upon them. More than 99% of the city was industrial center for of 10,000, 100,000 Salakia. Um, more than 99% of the city, an industrial center of 100,000 people on the western side of the mainland of Honshu burned to the ground that night. After a raid by 179 U.S. B-29 bombers dropping napalm, more than 2,700 people were killed and 8,000 injured. But the atomic bombing of Hiroshima occurred just five days later, and Toyama's tragic history was all but lost in the closing days of World War II. So pretty much, there was a whole bunch of bombings that took place in that area. Um, and there were many... Uh, 
I forgot where we read that at. There were a whole bunch of targets. All right, uh, the U.S. bombers, didn't, after they, tens of thousands more people were killed, and fire bombs followed on the major cities of Nagoya, Osaka, and Kobe. The U.S. bombers then targeted medium-sized towns, hitting 58 of them, according to the official history. So they they totally eviscerated Japan at that time. You know, it wasn't just Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And the reason why that was is because they were given the the, uh, the uh, um, blessing of the sword, Re Revelation 6.3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there was uh, there went out another horse that was red. Horse represents power. Red represents Esau. So this red horse, which are the Edomites, it says, and power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth. Now, the brother... I forget if it was Elder Malcolm or the brother, um, I believe it was uh, Aram, the, the head of the uh, uh, Alabama camp. He, he brought out inf some information that out of the 239 years, I believe, America's been in existence, it's been at war 222 years of that. If I'm not mistaken on the numbers, you know, if the brother sees this video, he can put the, uh, put the um, account on the... Uh, on the uh, comment board, you know, but that shows you that the majority of time that America's been in power, they've been at war, because and power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth. That's and that's what they do. They're not here to make peace. Whenever they talk about peace, they they're lying. It's not about peace unless their their uh, expectations and their uh, agenda is is uh, kept. It says, um, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto them a great sword. And with that great sword, they have destroyed the planet. Revelation 3 and 3, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. This represents the Roman Empire. When they were taken down pretty much by Jake, and they pretty much were suffering the uh, um, prison sentence of a thousand years. You know, a little more than that, but about a thousand years. Um, that they that they were taken out of power and weren't able to deceive the world anymore. It says, and his deadly wound was healed. So after that period, the deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And that's why America, when they came into power, what they pretty much did was they revived that ancient Roman Empire and their ways and their military tactics and the the swift way that the Roman Empire would come through and 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 tre tread down the enemies on the foot. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. So they're worshiping pretty much what? That Roman Empire system through America. It says, and they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast, and who is able to make war with him? Because no one can really make war with America. This is why you have superpowers like Russia and China, you know, and other allies having to get together in order to fight against America because their their uh, military is like no other military on the planet because it's an extension of that fourth beast in Daniel, which is uh, uh, the Roman Empire. And their, their army was exceeding great. Why? Because they're Edomites, because the Lord gave them that sword. All right, so now let's jump from there to the 11th verse. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. This represents the same beast... Roman Empire, but in the form of America. So they came into power as America, but all of their uh, um, policies and war and every, everything that they do is based off of the Roman system. It says, and this is why you have a Senate house with the Republicans and the, and the Democrats. It's nothing different than what was going on back then with the plebeians and the uh, uh, patricians. It says, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And that's what it is. They had two horns like a lamb because that represents the two opposing parties. They make it seem that they, part of them is good and part of them is bad. That's why they call it the left and the right. But they're really all on the same team. It says, and he spake as a dragon. Why? Because a dragon is cruel. So what they're saying is they, they're saying that they're doing things for the people, you know, for the benefit of the people. But really, it's for the entrapment of the people to get them to cooperate and to uh, lead them into their agenda, which is the so-called New World Order.
So like it. So it says, um, uh, it says, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him because what they did was they revived the ancient uh, Roman Empire and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So now the people here, Jake included, that are for the system and keeping the system afloat. What they're doing is they're worshiping the first beast. They're worshiping the Roman Empire. It says that he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And now we're just finding out that it wasn't just Hiroshima and Nagasaki. There were many different cities that Esau destroyed in uh, um, Japan. They targeted all the big cities first. And then they targeted, what was it, 50, they, they hit 58 smaller or medium-sized towns, you know. And they they were bragging about it, you know, that we're going to, this is the biggest firecracker Japan ever seen. Another one said we're going to firebomb them or something along those lines, you know. Oh, the water, uh, brother Yahawada from Hawaii, 222 out of 239 years, beautiful. So this is, this is insane, man. This is insane. And the last scripture I have, Isaiah 14 and 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did is weaken the nations? So here it is. They have this great power. They were given this great power. They're in, uh, uh, they have the whole world pretty much. But eventually overnight, they're going to fall. In one hour, this whole, this, this, this empire that took them hundreds of years to build to, to where it's at, it's going to fall in one hour. Their capital is going to fall in one hour. And after that one hour, everything is going to be desecrated. You know, Esau, his whole empire is going to be crushed after that. It says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, which they did. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High, which they did. They had, that's where you have these space shuttles and different things of that nature. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, which is the nation of Israel, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, in the sides of the north, which is where? North America. Because no one else has done this. This is Esau, the so-called white man. This is not talking about ancient Babylon. This is talking about modern-day Babylon. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. That's where they have their planes, helicopters, shuttles, so on and so forth, rockets. I will be like the Most High. That they're trying to be like the Most High. And everything that they do, they're trying to give life and death. They're trying to create life. They're trying to capture the spirit, the soul. But they can't. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit, because you're going to be brought down to a low condition. You know, and when we read Obadiah, the whole chapter, it goes into the reason why you're going to go down into that low condition. And after you serve your captivity, you're going to be rounded up, every last one of you, men, women, and children, and you're going to be burnt. You know, so the Israelites in the kingdom of heaven will burn you. You know, after your thousand years, you will be burnt to cinders and good riddance because you are the plague of the earth. It says, they that see thee shall, shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee. So all these nations are going to look upon you and consider you, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, which is the name of the title of the lesson, <clears throat> that did shake kingdoms? And they did. When you, when you look at this, at these pictures of these raids, you know, that doesn't look like they helped build and help this nation. That looks like they made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms. Right? It says that made the world as a wilderness, and not just Japan, but all of the world is a wilderness. Look at this, in comparison to Esau, you know, or, or should I say in comparison to uh, um, uh, ruling something in righteousness. They did not rule in righteousness, they ruled in wickedness. And all of this stuff was stuff that they sat down and they actually crafted in their mind what they were going to do. You know, now notice they didn't really do this in your so-called European countries. You know, even though you know you had the bombings of uh, of of, uh, of uh, there was some raids in in uh, England. You know, if, I'm not sure the exact 
extent of it, but nothing on this level. You know, I mean, just had the whole city, these different cities and, and towns set ablaze by these bombs. They were dropping bombs mercilessly on these people. Look at that. <laughs> All right. It says that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, everyone in his own house. Because after they serve their captivity, they will be set back up into power, these nations. But Esau is not going to be set up into power. He's going to be eviscerated. Because they they uh, fulfilled their lot. But, uh, but thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. And as a raiment of those that are slain, which is useless. So you're after you, after the Lord uses you, you're going to be cast out because you, there's no going to be no more use for you. This is the same uh, treatment that you give people that help you when you don't need them any longer. You discard them. So the Lord is going to discard you after He uses your bitch ass. Thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass uh, trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because you're going to be burnt up. Because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people, the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. And you're not, you're not, you're not even going to be a memory. You know, like now they talk about George Washington and Christopher Columbus. And there ain't going to be none of that bullshit in the kingdom. You're going to be remembered for the scumbags that you are. And you're going to actually be forgotten. Like the scripture saying in Job, the 20th chapter, prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. Why? Because they are their fathers coming back. That they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. Why? Because if they do that, it's going to be the same old shit. They're going to continue to come back. They're going to continue to be wicked. They're going to continue to have homosexuals and give women rights and all this other madness. So they're not going to change because they are the wicked. You know? So pretty much, for I will raise up against them, save the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name... And remnant, the son and nephew, save the Lord. So the Lord is going to cut you down. You know? It says, I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water. And I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, save the Lord of hosts. So the Most High is going to take this place out in a spectacular way. And it's only going to take one hour for America, your capital, the capital of your empire, to be brought down to, uh, not even to her knees, just completely eviscerated. <laughs> Taken out, uh, uh, out off the off the planet, you know. So I just wanted to do a little something on that since I ran across this information today. The fire bombing of Tokyo. There are many different cities in Japan that were bombed that same year, but they always just talk about Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They don't talk about other uh, cities and towns that were bombed by these devils, and they they didn't show any mercy. I mean, if you could find some of those quotes. I mean, I only heard, I think, like two quotes, and one of them we read in here, in this, in this, uh, yeah, right here, uh, nope, that wasn't it, right here, Ju uh, Curtis Le LeMay, you're going to deliver the biggest firecracker that Japanese have ever seen, you know, and, and other ones were, were not so kind, you know, so pretty much, you know, I'm gonna leave it there, um, this has been, is this the man that made the earth to tremble? And these devils are remorseless, and this is why the Most High Yahweh Hashem Shai has to stomp them out. All right. So with that, you know, I pray that your brothers have been edified. I left these in the description box, so I'm pretty sure brothers, if they want to read up, up on it, maybe find more information that they may want to do a lesson on. You know, it's up to you, brothers. So with that, I pray that your brothers have been edified. Till the next time, I say shalom. You know, so pretty much for I will raise up against them, save the Lord of hosts and cut off from Babylon the name and Babylon.